In this video, we will derive Bernoulli's equation, which describes energy conservation in fluids. At the end of the video, we will also find Bernoulli's principle, which states that the velocity and pressure in a fluid have an inverse relationship. So if the velocity is high, then the pressure is low, and vice versa. In order to describe all of this mathematically, let us start with our assumptions. In particular, we will assume an ideal fluid which has no internal friction, that is, no viscosity, but constant density everywhere. That is, it is an incompressible fluid. Furthermore, at a single point inside the fluid, the velocity vector is constant, and the fluid carries no angular momentum. If something gets carried away by an ideal fluid, it will not rotate. Lastly, there are no turbulences, so we are dealing with laminar flow. Now we're ready to start the derivation. Consider the following pipe, which starts out narrow and then becomes wider. Furthermore, the center of the pipe also rises up a certain height. We will focus on two volumes of fluid, one on the left and one on the right, which are defined to have the same mass. We are interested in their total energy, which is given by a sum of kinetic energy plus potential energy. The kinetic energy is simply one half mv squared, but the potential energy has two parts. One contribution comes from gravitational energy, mgh, which is important since the right part is for instance higher up than the left part, and therefore has a different potential energy. The other contribution comes from work that is performed against the fluid pressure. If you think of the fluid flowing from left to right, then there is a force pointing to the left coming from the pressure of the fluid right next to our volume. In order to travel some distance delta x, we need to perform work on the fluid given by force times displacement, or equivalently, pressure times cross-sectional area times displacement. This also increases the volume's potential energy. So what is the total energy of the fluid volume on the left? We have kinetic energy, where we can write the mass as density times volume, gravitational potential energy, and the work we discussed earlier. And due to energy conservation, this must equal the energy of the second volume. If we write out everything, the equation looks like this. Now recall the continuity equation, which states that for an incompressible fluid, V1 must be the same as V2, since the same amount of fluid flowing in must also flow out, while nothing gets lost or created in the middle. This means we can remove the volume from the whole equation and get Bernoulli's equation. Since we started with an equation for energy and divided by volume, these terms are now energy densities, or equivalently, pressures. Note that for zero velocity, the equation gets reduced to the hydrostatic equation. This makes sense, since the static in hydrostatic means that nothing is moving. A more general way to write down Bernoulli's equation is to claim that these three contributions here are constant for all points in an ideal fluid. And if we consider a horizontal pipe for simplicity, such that the gravitational potential energy is the same anyway, we reach Bernoulli's principle. If you increase the pressure, the velocity must go down. And if you reduce the pressure, the velocity goes up. By the way, these two terms also have their own name. P is called the static pressure, while 1 half rho v squared is called dynamic pressure. But that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching.